Welcome to Makusi Network. Welcome to the channel. Today we're chatting about Kaiser Chiefs. We're doing player ratings today, so look up for that. And we're also asking the question. Kevin Johnson yesterday went out to the media and he said, um, Matt and Castillo won't make the lineup because the table for him was brilliant, etc., etc. And my question to Kevin Johnson is, do you attend Kaiser Chiefs practices? Does Kaiser Chiefs even practice? Because some of us even don't think Chiefs practice because of what they put on the field and because they have so many times, so much time together, but we don't see what they do at training. But my question is, how is it that Kevin Johnson is only seeing now that Sitebe has always been a good player? Like, he needed Mar Castile and Matt to have two yellow cards to then realize he's a good player. I don't know. But let's get to it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please join join the family. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The subscription numbers are going so bad, meaning that maybe the people aren't getting the channel. So please share the, share the channel if you enjoy the channel. And let's keep growing. Our aim was 10K by the end of the year. It doesn't look likely, but we're going to push. We're going to push. But let's get to the game. Today, we're going to do player ratings. So my assessment of the game is also going to be around player ratings. But before I get to that, I want to address this thing. Yesterday, I said I'm going to address this Samkelo Zwane thing, and today I'm addressing it. I looked at Samkelo Zwane's body language. He looked like a player who is defeated, like who is absolutely defeated. He doesn't look like a player who feels he will ever play for whatever reason. And when I looked at him, like they were doing substitution, I think it was Ranga and Sahil or something. And he was just sitting like this because he knew good. I won't play. Like he was just like, yes, yes, you're fun, you're fun. Because the boy's body language now is that body language of someone who has reached their breaking point. When I say reach their breaking point, I won't be surprised. And a lot of you uh, may think I'm talking nonsense, but I won't be surprised by the end of the season. If some Kelo's one is representatives come to Chiefs and ask for him to be transferred. Chiefs being Chiefs, they're going to want to transfer him to a lower league division, whatever the case may be. But I feel his representatives will say he's being wasted on the bench. And then they're going to say we don't want him to be a hard derby or whatever. So that is one thing. And another thing I've picked up is that Siteba, it's been rumored that he's been sitting bench all this time because of management is not happy with him for whatever reason. Danzane has been sitting benches for all this re time because management decided to suspend him. Kune as well. Uh, Jensen didn't have a chance to feature for the first team. Puso Titejane, Mdaga um, left cheers because of management. And this is what I wanted to say about that. I wanted to say, Keza Chi's management has too much influence in how a coach does his job. If Kevin Johnson was going to be a good coach, what if he needed a player like Sitebe? What if he needed a player like Jansen early on? What if he needed a player like Umtanzane Ukune early on? But then team the team goes and suspends these players. And there's something what I say is that you can punish a player off the field, but then he still allows to be allowed to continue his job. And I don't know what happened with Sitebe, but I think he has a problem with management. But let's get to the ratings. Oh, Vuma. Vuma, I'm going to get eight. I don't like giving high ratings if it's not um, deserved, but Vuma, I'm going to give eight. Even nine would have been a good take. But Cape Town City didn't really travel last much, to be quite honest. There was only one shot that was about, that was a really dangerous shot. But other than that, Vuma did well. He did well with the corners. Um, He did well with the distribution, even though... Unfortunately, we will never find another Kune distribution. I feel like currently, they, I haven't seen anyone. Ronwin Williams is the closest, but you know, he doesn't play for Chiefs. So, I uh, he was just good enough. So, I'll give him an 8. Klanti. Klanti doesn't give us anything offensively. But defensively, he, he does do his job defensively. Like, I know a lot of us will, will cry and what, 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 what. But we have to be honest with one thing. A lot of you like Mashiani, but Mashiani is not a good defender. He's more of a good offensive defender. Meaning that he can't do his primary job of defending very well. He is better actually in offense, but in defense is not the best. Actually, in defense, Slant is better. But at the same time, you guys know my argument. I would rather say give Mashiani a chance 
Give Solomon a chance. Give the players a chance and let us see. It wouldn't hurt anyone. If we're going to draw and lose anyway, why don't we just draw and lose with the team we think is the strongest team or giving players a chance? So that's one thing I'll say. Slanty, I'm going to give F F6, 5.5 to 6 because he did do his job, which is to defend. But offensively, it doesn't give us anything, unfortunately. Um, Msimango and Dove, both of them, I'm going to give a 7. Hey, this is not a sundown seven. This is just a seven. So well done to them. I'm gonna give them a seven because they did well. You know, I can't really complain about how they did. They did well. So I'm gonna give them a seven each. Um Msimango is looks like a very good captain. A part of me wants to give him a 7.5 because how he did his captain duties outside of just playing were actually done well how he was chatting to the ref how he was coming players down how he was just chatting with his teammates he looks like a perfect captain for chiefs if in my opinion i would not um give matt the unbanned if matt does come back into the team which he probably will i would not give him i'd leave it with him Simango, to build for next season aim of this video of what i'm trying to say to you guys we're building for next season um, right back Quinica, he shouldn't be at right back. He shouldn't be playing. Solomon's should be playing. Solomon's, the argument of Shanti and Mashiani is very different to the argument of Quinica and Solomon's. Why? Solomon's is actually good defensively and is actually brilliant in attack. So Solomon's case is not the same as the case of Mashiani and Shanti. So that one is, I don't know. So Quinica, I'm going to give a four. Quinica was getting tumpuzad by Gonzalez. Gonzalez became tata left, right, and switch. I'm not washing him. Means I'm not was was. And Quinica had no had no. Quinica is a defender. He was not present yesterday, guys. Like, if I take out Quinica out of that game and we play ten against eleven, it will still do the same result. Cause Lapa, Gonzalez, and Rhodes were doing their own things until Dupree came. And started disturbing them because Dupree started playing like a right back because Guinica was playing like a center back. He was not even available. Sitebe. Sitebe, I'm going to give an 8.5. Highest rating of the players I'm going to give 8.5. Sitebe was our heart and soul. Sitebe played well. I was trying to do pictures, the ones I do usually, and then analyze the game, but unfortunately, technology was not working with me but i wanted to show you how sitebo was spraying the balls to dupree spraying the balls to do shabalala duba etc and sitebo was making us play and why hasn't he been there all along so that is all i can say um Teto, a lot of people didn't like him Teto because Teto would lose the ball a lot of times now and then and umteto was i saw one big problem to his game the big problem to umteto's game is he finds himself in attacking positions, but he's a negative player. He doesn't know what to do. For example, there was a point where Modi passed him the ball and he just had to tap it here and take a shot. But what did Umteta do? Modi passed him the ball. He was too scared to open his body because he was like, hey, what if they take the ball? And then he ran back to Modi. But... If it was a defensive midfielder, like let's say some Kelo one, the moment they passed him, he was going to trap it and see what he, there's a whole, the, the defenders are saying shoot. And he was going to trap it and shot. You see, so I don't like that part of his game. But a lot of the times it's because of how Cheese play. How Cheese play is this. They switch Usitebe and Umtetwa switch. One minute Umtetwa becomes a six, then Usitebe becomes a six. And they keep switching like that. And that's just how they do it. But what tends to happen is that there's a lot of moments where Mteto finds himself in attacking positions, but he doesn't know what to do what, what to do with the ball. So it becomes a problem. So that's why I'm, Mteto, I'm going to just give him a 5.5 to 6. He had a solid game. One thing I'll say about Mteto that he does very well, he outmuscles players off the ball. There's so many challenges yesterday where Mteto didn't kick these guys. He just went and stood by them. And the moment they kicked the ball, Yam Teto just puts his body like this. And it's over. Mteto takes the ball. So that's one thing Mteto did well yesterday. And a lot of you guys are going to miss that. But Mteto outmuscled a lot of the attacking players. Abo, Abo, Ndot, Abo Rhodes, Abo Hudeman, 
all of these guys, Gonzalez, Mteto was on their case. Why do you think so about Petrus, about Hudeman and all of these guys, some of them ended up having injuries? Because Mteto was very forceful. So that's a good thing. It reminds me of Katsande first year. Because Siteva was playing that year like role and um, Teto was playing the Katsande like role, the hard hard knock. But the one difference was Teto, he should keep it simple. Just pass the ball. And then Mdu Shabalala, I'm going to give a 6 to 6.5. It wasn't a great game. Maybe I'll just leave it at 6. 6, it, was, it wasn't his best game, but he sprayed the passes where he could. He had an energy to try more and not play safe. But the one thing I will highlight at the end, the biggest problem, and, and you guys will get what I'm saying. Dupri, I'm going to give him a 6.5 just based on energy, but he has the same problem as Mdu Shabalala. In important moments, they do dumb things. Um, because yeah, and I'll get to that part. Duba, same story, good energy. What, 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 what? I'm gonna give him a six. A lot of you are gonna say no because he missed that chance, but I'm still gonna give him a six because of his movement of the ball, how he kept pressuring the defenders. Cape Town City's defenders couldn't sit and relax with U, 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 Duba there because it's all over. But if it was Ranga, it's easy because Ranga stands here and they all just stand with him, so it makes them get more rest. But you saw how tired Cupido and Cordino were after facing those guys. And then Modi, Modi, actually, I'm gonna give a, a five, a five or five point five. I'll even, even just say five because he had a poor performance. It was bad. Dazane um, came in, showed some. I won't give the substitute ratings because they didn't really add too much or they didn't have enough time to add too much. Like Solomon's had good moves, but it's just too little time because Chiefs only did substitutions close to 70th minute. So I can't really give those ratings. But the one thing I'm going to highlight, and this is the mo two most important things I picked up in the game. One. I keep saying this each and every week. Chiefs does not practice set pieces. We can't always kick direct, kick direct, say to pre go, kick direct. Let's play short corners, guys. Short corners have a different angle. Short corners have a different angle. Let's not just do one thing all the time because it becomes predictable. Even the team's plan for us to be like, Dupree is going to kick it. We just have to plan for Dupree. There's nothing like, hey, we didn't plan for this guy. Why is the short corner? Then they panic. And then they're like, Aspak, you be say? And then... It gets to the back post, it finds a bomb simama on the head. We don't have those kind of things. We just do a simple thing and teams can see. The other thing I'm going to highlight is the one that even wants to make me cry is Yes, I am no longer going to try to touch too much on Kevin Johnson's coaching because we have all agree with him. He's not a good coach. He doesn't have good coaching tactics. He's not a very good coach. And what's worse is that his assistant coach, Ufana Nai, Dylan Shepard Nai, I've had enough of him. They are the same. They are not good coaches and they won't take us anyway. But there's one thing that I cannot blame them on. One, Chiefs doesn't have a naturally gifted lethal striker. But most important to that, oh, Kosiam. Chiefs doesn't have a striker coach. We need a striker coach. I don't know what more I can say in terms of this. Last season, we were missing tap-ins. This season, we're missing tap-ins. What is the common denominator as to why Chiefs is not succeeding, uh, succeeding striker coach? Duba gets the ball. When Duba gets the ball, he's running, he's running. What does Duba do? Ask yourself, what does Duba do in that instance? Duba gets the ball, he, he wants to kick the ball like this because he wants the ball on his right foot. He wants to kick the ball like this. Instead of the ball is going across you, why are you trying to run and shoot? Instead of if the ball is going across you, you are a striker. Use your left foot. Simple. Dupree, same story. Dupree, same story. Siteva passes him. The ball is on his, right, his left foot. He hesitates. Instead of shooting at first time, because he's already in a good position, he hesitates, thinking what he, he, he can't shoot with his left, he touches it. The defender comes, intercepts. Another one, Dushabalala, gets the ball in the box. When he gets the ball in the box, the angle says, don't shoot straight. The angle says, shoot far post, curl the ball. Dushabalala shoots straight. It hits Coutinho in the face. Instead of if he curled it, it's a goal. Another one, Dupree gets the ball. He, instead of passing him to Shabalala, he takes it on his left. Simple again, 
instead of trying to shoot it straight, just shooting, hit the far post. Just try to curl it with your left. It doesn't have to be the strongest of shot. Just make sure it's on target. They don't do that. Why am I saying all of this? If you had a striker coach, they would teach you these basics. I can teach this to a grade five student and they will understand and do it every day in a game because they'll say, coach told me to hit the far post. But I can't teach it. But when there's adults doing this thing and you don't want to correct them, send them. I am only but a fan, but I can see that these guys have not been taught if I post. I...